So the analysts now think that this was a huge obstacle removed from the future path for success for Wynn Resorts. This was about a long, dirty, drawn out case between co-founders Kazuo Okada and Steve Wynn. When the big warring personalities were taken out of the mix, you had two companies who decided it was in their best interest to settle it and move on. Uh, Matt Maddox told me when I sat down with him, this was a huge priority as soon as he took over the CE role. And remember, he's taking over at a time of great crisis for Wynn Resorts. A lot of news happening today. Yeah, the big news on Wynn Resorts was the settlement of this big lawsuit that's been dragging out for six years. It removes a huge potential money liability. Some analysts predicted it could have been $5.3 billion had judgment come down against Wynn Resorts. And also the possibility of dirty laundry getting submitted as evidence in open court. Matt Maddox said it was one of his first priorities as CEO. He sat down and he talked to me in his first TV exclusive. When I took over, I knew what I wanted to do, which was to talk to a reasonable management team in Tokyo and get this behind us and make a settlement. In what way does it clear the way for the future for Wynn Resorts? It, uh, it, it was just an overhang that took too much management time and too much attention. It was taking the air out of the room. And so when I looked at it, I thought, buying back 24 million, 24 million shares of stock at $78, financed at a 6% interest rate, is great for our shareholders. So just make that deal and be done. When did you learn about the complaints about Steve Wynn's behavior? The, uh, the, the complaints I learned about when they became public in a press release a couple of years ago in the middle of a proxy um, issue with a, a former board member. So, and that has to do with a $7.5 million settlement. That's correct. Were you aware of that settlement then, what, in 2012 and 2013, no. earlier? Uh, it was in when the press release came out and I read about it. I, this is the first time I'd heard of it. And uh, I asked internally about it and was briefed. And what about the complaints by employees? I mean, you never heard about the concerns people had about Steve Wynn? There was never a complaint that made it to me. We have hotlines in this building that are uh, available since our inception. We never had a complaint on our anonymous hotlines in the last 15 years, either here or in Macau. So, um, no, there were, there were not complaints, uh, formal complaints that were coming up to me to investigate. But I'll tell you, we're taking these issues very seriously. Two days ago, you took an unusual step of making a mid-quarter uh, investor call. Why did you do that? The, uh, the, uh, there had been a lot of news about when since the fourth quarter. And I felt like uh, if I, I wanted to come out and tell people about what's been going on since I've been CEO, we're not going to be doing two-month updates in the future. But I thought that it was a good opportunity to talk to people about our business in Las Vegas. I, I got to ask you, because you've worked so closely with Steve Wynn, you were working side by side with him. Were you there? Were you watching the decision he was making to resign? I was there. I well, was there. What did that look like? Um, it was a it was a board meeting, and uh, Mr. Wynn came in and. Uh, told everybody that he thought that it was time for the company to move on and that he didn't want to take the company through um, this avalanche of media activity and that he was going to resign effective immediately as chairman and CEO. What was the reaction when he said that in the room? It, it should be no surprise that it's been quite an emotional roller coaster. And I think the reaction is that was really strong leadership to step up and actually step down from a company that he founded to make sure that the company is protected. Was that the right call in your opinion? It was the right call. What do you think Steve Wynn's legacy is? I think history is going to determine Steve Wynn's legacy. He clearly is the founder of modern day Las Vegas and was an integral and leader, an integral part and leader uh, in the shaping of modern day Las Vegas. Have other companies made offers to buy Wynn Resorts, either in whole or in part? 
We've had no offers to buy wind resorts. Would you entertain offers to buy wind resorts? It, it, as a CEO, I have a fiduciary duty to entertain anything. But what I can tell you is we're not for sale. And there's been talks about breaking the company up. That also makes no sense. So to pursue strategic alternatives at a time when the narrative is not about the business is a mistake. So what I'm doing is I'm getting everybody focused again on what it is that we do. We build places that are fun and that produce the best returns in the business. So there are still a lot of challenges to producing the best results in the business, namely a slew of shareholder lawsuits among the biggest, Oregon and New York State, suing the board over the breach of fiduciary responsibility. There are new victim lawsuits against Steve Wynn um, and potentially against the company as well that need to be settled. But it's clear that Matt Maddox sees this as an opportunity to turn over a fresh leap, to refocus energy on making his employees feel valued and proving to shareholders that there is real value to come in this company. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.